Hi everybody, it's Ray, otherwise known as Life and Vibe, and today we're bringing Glitter and Laser's latest running video. And if you remember last time, she found out she was not bending her knees and may be difficult for her to become the runner that she was hoping she could become. But anyway, before we get started, I did want to say if you do like this type of content, do make sure that you hit the subscribes and leave a comment, leave a like if you do like this video and just want to make sure that I always give a fair use statement and a bit of a disclaimer here before we show somebody else's content. So let's bring on Miss Glitters over here. I'm going to make myself small. I'm going to make her big. And we're going to just catch up where she was last time. Strength, how you're walking, how you're moving, what aches and pains you have. We want to see structurally what is going on, how irritable the tissues are or are not. And then that will help us kind of create the profile that is you as far as getting your journey to that 5K and okay. whatever else you want to do. The first thing Dr. Rodin did was sit me down and ask me a ton of questions about my medical history. He wanted to have a clear picture of where I was at currently, and then also understand any aches and pains I was experiencing that might be able to be corrected through gait training and physical therapy. And I think that's really beneficial, though I think that this particular doctor is a chiropractor, but I would suggest that anybody who is starting an exercise program, especially somebody who's not exercised for an extended period of time, just follow up with your healthcare provider and make sure that you are healthy to start, that you're not going to have any adverse event happen or that there isn't anything that should be addressed before you start an exercise program. And so it seems uh, interesting that she waited so long to actually see somebody and follow up with somebody regarding her running. But that's kind of, you know, where she's at. She had some news, as we said, when she got there. So that was the last video. Can I be a runner facing the hard truth? And we're going to take a look at her latest video that she has. And I've not seen it. Uh, so it's going to be a new video for me from her. And let's just take a look. Let's share the screen here with Miss Anna and see the having to walk. It says my running journey. You have to walk before you run. Again, as I always say, I'm just constantly surprised at what I'm capable of when I put myself in the situation to try. We're going to fix your walk as well. Not okay. just make you a good runner, but make you a good walker. This just gives me hope that there's like still so much more. Because sometimes you wonder like, okay, I've been at this for a year, which I know technically a year is not a long time, but like it feels like a long time. Yeah. And I think this is just coming at the perfect time for me to like just keep moving forward because this does, especially with getting on that treadmill, uh, feels a little bit impossible. So today we're back at... Not to interrupt Anna, but I'm always surprised that she was so emotional to find out after a year she wasn't really built as a runner. And if you could see in my picture, I actually do have an extensive time as a runner. I started my running passion, you can say, when I was at school at 10 and I was on a school track team and cross country team in the UK or in England, I should say, and ended up joining a local city running team and traveled extensively throughout the UK as a child doing track and cross country. And I ran throughout my adult doing distance races. The longest I've ever run is a half marathon and I've run quite a few of those and at what's considered a pretty decent pace. So I am coming at this video and always with Anna's running 
with a background in the sport where I was trained for years uh, at a local club level. And like I said, traveled a lot as a child. So it, it did not surprise me that they had her uh, go back to just getting the basics of walking before running. And she really wasn't running anyway. She was just kind of speed walking and a little jogging at the best. Sorry, Anna, to break your heart. That's why I was surprised that she was crying. It's like, girl, how did you not know? Everyone's been telling you for a year that you are not built to be a runner. You're not going to lose the weight that you think you are. Anyway, let me run lab. As you guys know, for like the past couple of weeks, I've been doing my PT literally everywhere. Disney, <laughs> Tracy's house, anywhere I could. And now we're going to. I mean, really, Anna, that's very performative at an airport. Nobody needs to see that at the airport. I know there's long waits and so forth, but still, really? Come on, girl. <laughs> Just not the airport. Not the airport. See what effect it's had. We're also going to go shopping for shoes that are best fit to support me as I work on those changes and how I walk and also as I start to run. So today is kind of a big day. I'm going to know really for the first time in my life from a doctor what shoes mm, I need to be rocking to, you know, keep rocking without injuring myself. But All right. I always want to preface that the doctors that Anna is, see uh, is seeing are not medical doctors. They are chiropractic doctors, which is considered an alternative complementary medicine and not one that is approved for any insurance purposes, I believe, here in the United States. I think it's all private pay. And it's not a practitioner that you would be referred to from a medical provider. They are all in the alternative medicine field. So I always want to preface this when she talks about going to see the doctors. And this is the sort of thing we fell into with Jesse Lee Wood and other creators I have reacted to that they use the term doctor without clarifying really what is a medical doctor and is what somebody who practices alternative medicine. And we should be clear with that because they do follow different regulatory boards. And so I never want that to be confused. Also, I think it's good that she, I cannot believe that she is after a year and saying that how passionately she wanted to be a runner is now getting shoes to fit her. I mean, I find this surprising because I, I mean, maybe, maybe people don't know, but the first thing that obviously you would do, I would recommend is take the time to go to a good run store, not a Dick's, not a big mass store or an online purchase place actually go to a running store. There are often local runners in these stores who will assess your running gait and will let you know which shoe is the best to suit you. And I always say do that first. And afterwards, once you find out what your gait is and so forth, then you can liberally purchase shoes online. But you kind of got to get your professional to kind of help you to begin with. Anyway, okay, let's keep going. I can make a 10-minute video last an hour. But I will tell you cool things. My knees no longer hurt and my ankle no longer hurts. So this is all magical for me. Let's go. So I'm going to go through all three mm -hmm. views. Okay. okay. There is four. What a shock. She, her knees and her ankles no longer hurt because she is following advice from some type of practitioner. I mean, like I said, it's not my favorite people, but... I, you know, I rather have a sports medicine facility help with folks who are doing any type of running or anything of that na nature. If you can do anything with sports medicine, that is somebody who is following under medical guidance and would have more regulatory bodies through that. Uh, again, these doctors of chiropractic often have other regulatory boards which aren't quite the same. So I just always want people to make sure that they're not confused because the word doctor is used intermittently. 
but for the sake of the Between left the side being the problem child, we're going to focus on that. It's weird. I know the left side is the problem child. I can tell now. When we are running, you actually do a very good job <laughs> keeping your leg underneath yourself. Oh, yeah. Similar to what I said you did with the walk where you kind of posted. Yeah. You're unlocked, but you keep it there and you don't actually absorb and coil down like if you were going to jump. You just use your ankle. So if we ever ever watch the Olympics for speed walking, you technically do a double stance. So I'm technically just walking. You are super speed walk. Look at me, super. I'm a fastest walker. There has some, no, I'm not. But and there is nothing wrong with that. It's not. So that's not jogging or running. Technically, no. Okay, I have never run or jogged. No, I have also have a <laughs> inclination. Shocker. Erda has never run nor jogged, but sped walk or speed walking, <laughs> which is what I said it looked like she was doing. And I told you, I have not watched this video. Okay. Just, just saying, just saying. And the reason also too, is when you're running, one of the things is that you have to be really careful about not bringing there's like when your foot is falling you still kind of want to see your toes you don't want it you don't want to be going like too like going too far forward on that like foot landing uh in order to keep the balance and to make sure the distribution is good um so yeah that you were not very comfortable on the trip no i hate the treadmill so I have a feeling you may be on the verge of a jog, like on the regular road. So I thought I was going to learn that I've never run in my life, but what I actually learned today is that I've never jogged either, or may not have jogged. We're about to find out if I actually can jog, so <laughs> let's find out together. First, Dr. Roden had me show him my walk and also show him the progress I'd made using the PT exercises I had been doing since our last visit. So I am super proud of you. you. I mean, I'm glad that she is finally getting corrected and being shown and not just continuing to kind of run her way uh, around different cities without really understanding there is a certain way that you do think about how your feet fall and how you carry yourself and so forth when you are running how you are striding your distance of your stride when you are doing distance running is very different from a sprinter. For example, when I run distances, I actually try not to have a very big stride. It's more like how quickly am I turning over my legs, but kind of keeping my stride shorter. So it seems counterintuitive, but it actually prevents for less injury and gets you able to carry yourself for longer distances. So there are certain things about running that uh, are more scientific than people realize. Anyway, I'm glad that Anna's getting like corrected. All right, keep going. This is actually quite interesting. You are not hyperextending your knees anymore. <laughs> right? <laughs> now. What Casey's going to polish with you is, at least this is for the walk, okay? Mm -hmm. You've reduced your stride. Kick butt. Love it. But you're kind of back like this, like, what's up, guys? I'm cool. And you're here versus kind of that offensive, like, hey, I'm Come coming on. at you. Like, okay. I own this place. I want a little bit more lean. Oh, God, that feels so weird. Because you like not a diaper in my car. <laughs> Next, Dr. Ronan had me run outside. This was so he could see if I could actually jog or if I was just walking really fast. Oh. You have you have a moment. I was like <laughs> I don't know. I felt that her knees still looked pretty like she was trying to carry herself over a distance but that her she just wasn't getting that that movement of the knee bending she just didn't look like she was flowing she looked very uncomfortable in my opinion very uncomfortable you officially jog okay we want to be a little bit more joggy 
right? But I do it. But you do it. You have a moment where you have one foot off and one foot off. Okay. Okay. That is where we want to keep you. We don't. I literally have photos of me running and the, I don't think either of my feet are on the, on the ground. Like literally both are up in the air at that point. <laughs> Pretty much. I think maybe one heel is potentially touching the back, but I have, you know, so like I said, there's certain things that you're thinking of when you're running and then it's about breathing patterns and so forth. Um, I miss being able to run. I just, I have to wait. Oh, I, I may never ever be able to run like I used to anyway. So it's something I have to accept, but I had a great time while I was able to do it. Want the crazy float tuck. That's not necessary and very risky at this point. All right, I'm gonna pass you off to Casey. Let's go Casey. Anna, kick butt, take names. Boom. Find your butt. I will. <laughs> It's right here. <laughs> In PT with Casey, we were working on two really important things. The first was learning how to feel and fire my glute muscles. And then from here, I'm going to squat down on that single leg and then come back up. Currently, when I ran, Ooh. I did not use my butt. So learning how to fire my glutes would help me move more safely, <laughs> as well as kind of... Div Girl, that's the whole thing that you use is your butt and your abs the two things that you should be thinking about is your glutes and your abs <laughs> i mean really as far as like sometimes like literally for muscular turnover, turning sorry uh, that was a garbled word anyway let's continue but yeah poor anna she didn't look too steady down on that squat yeah she needed this like a year ago oh, the demand glad of my you didn't get injured out, allowing me to oh, you, to you were starting to though and move more efficiently the second thing we were working on during these PT sessions were allowing me to have better form by hinging forward a little bit. Dr. Roden talked a little bit about how I basically stood too much upright. While I learned to bend my knees, my walking had become, well, wonky. So learning how to hinge forward also helped better support my balance and that muscle distribution that we were working on by learning how to fire my glutes. Um, we're at Ready to Run, which is a store specifically geared for shoes for runners and I think other things as well. And we are meeting. Oh, hi. <laughs> She's like, I was not prepared. Go. But yes, we're going to go get you some shoes. Let's go get shoes. Yeah, let's do it. I will do it. Hi. I guess you don't go on runs. From Aww. your map that you guys went through over at Run Lab, yeah. at the end of that. And don't feel intimidated going into a running store. Often the people that work there, yes, they're going to be runners and they're going to be young and they're going to be probably fit and thin and all of these things. But the running community is in reality, a very kind community. We just didn't want you injured, Anna. So I'm glad that this is a journey that is more appropriately looking, though, I, like I said, I would still, you know, see a medical doctor first, make sure that everything is good to go, that your blood pressure is good, you know, just, you know, double check, because you can have things happen if you start to exert too much effort onto your heart and so even starting with a run walk program and starting out that way or just like i said just getting out and doing steps but yeah just go to the running stores let them help you get a good pair of shoes it's worth it a lot of them have great return policies if the shoe doesn't work out I promise you you might think you're saving money online you're not and i also want to say get two pairs of shoes. Don't just get a pair of shoes. Get two. You need to rotate each day. So each time you run, change to the new shoes. So don't get them looking the same because you may not know which ones. So you may have different ones that you, you know, your road shoes, you know, two sets of road shoes or whatever. But yeah. And then maybe you can try two brands and find out which brand you actually start to really enjoy the most. And that can always be a great way to discover your brands. But don't just buy one. Don't be fooled into just leaving the store with one pair of shoes. You're going to invest a few hundred dollars. 
to start out and be injury free. Just a little piece of advice from an old runner. Thing, some shoe anatomy stuff. So what we do with that, we look at your structure. So the way your bones are put together, the things you can't yep. change about yourself. We look at that. We look at your range of motion, which is something that can change, but it takes a while. So we look at how does all of that combine with what your goals are, what your injury history is, all of that. And it spits out the shoe report that you got at the end of that map. Mm -hmm. And so then the way that interfaces with shoe store people is they can look at it and say, okay, you need a wide platform, a four to eight millimeter offset, yeah. on and on and on. I don't what know what do any of that on the means, wall, but that's but the shoe people do. And that's yes. why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> what I've learned from this experience so far is I still don't know what the hell I need. But what I did learn is that I get to go shopping more. So this is a win. <laughs> I thought I knew all about how to pick a good shoe for a bigger body, but it's really not that simple. Now, everybody's foot moves and is shaped a little bit differently. So you need to find a shoe that works perfectly for you. A lot of the Hoka shoes, because they're built on a rocker, have a really aggressive arch that doesn't move or kind of move with the foot. So people who like to... You know what? I wish I had put a bet down that he was going to get her in some Hokas because that is a very good shoe. In fact, that's what President Biden's been rolling around in lately. So it's a very good shoe. I'm going to let him keep going uh, uh, talking about the shoe. But yeah. I wish I had put a bet down for the brand because that's the one I was going to go for. Nice shoe. She needs two pairs. To feel that arch support, it can be great. But for some people who have a lower arch, kind of like her, it can be something that pokes you. And over the course of an hour or two being on your feet, it can be aggressive and mm. not the most appropriate thing. We also talked a lot about varying shoes to build foot strength, which is something that had never crossed my mind. The reality is in a bigger body, my arches were a little bit flattened and that was due in part to my weight. So learning how to rebuild the strength mm. and endurance in my feet was going. So I just saw she had on a pair of New Balance, which is always a good pair of running shoes. I have, I just got myself a new pair of Reeboks. Reeboks were the first ever brand of running shoe I ever owned back in the, uh, gosh, very, I think it was 1980. Uh, she's now got a pair of Sarkinets on. <laughs> <laughs> that's another really good brand of running shoe anyway so yeah there's a, that's a pair of Salkanes and then she so yeah she's she's trying the good ones out Brooks is another really good one that I like um and uh yeah going to be part of my journey and the best way to do that would be by trying different shoes that challenged my foot to build different muscles so instead of getting one pair of shoe in like a bunch of different colors I got three different pairs of shoes that would equally challenge my feet and encourage my foot to build strength and endurance that would support me when running longer distances. Oh. In this See, I told you I did not watch this video. <laughs> See, beforehand, Anna was running and just buying stuff because she thought it looked cute on her. With not even going, how has it been a year? This is just what always amazes me. And she's made content and made so much money from it. And I sit here having been a runner and like many runners and we're not making any money on, uh, you know, showing up in a stretchy pair of leggings. I promise you that. But see, she's buying different pairs of shoes. You need more than one pair of shoes. You need different brands of shoes and you need to be able to rotate your shoes. So it's always good to know that you can get she is at a good price somewhere because the, it is initially an investment and each pair of shoes just to give you heads up only lasts 300 miles per pair of shoes so it's good to have an idea uh how long you have your shoes for so i have always dated the box the shoe comes in because it gives me an idea, at least the age of the shoe. And that usually gives me an idea, at least when I used to be a much more serious runner, um, how many miles I had pretty much put on them. So I knew when to, to, to take them out of rotation and start introducing a new pair in. So I, you know, though I was always introducing a new pair in and taking an old pair out and, and cycling through the others all at the same time. And it kept me injury free uh in my running career my current issues have maybe some things to do with the running but a lot to do with uh hereditary stuff 
this day and age, we try to give a generic solution for every single person. And the reality is health and your body is never generic. Yeah. And so it's never going to be the right solution because if you're like optimizing for the median because you're optimizing for somebody else's issue. That's right. And so uh, as, as sometimes annoying as this process can be, because I have a lot of doctors and a lot of support, I'm grateful that I'm able to do that because I feel like I'm actually getting to the root of what's how my body works versus um, responding to how people think bodies generally work. Yes. And it's a very different approach. And I wish that honestly more. And I want to make sure that people understand this isn't just an issue for people who are plus size. So I want to make sure because I feel that Ayla's intonation in her voice was implying it was just something that, sh you know, people who are on the plus size, heavier size might be experiencing. But it's everybody's body. And that's why on my channel, I encourage talking to healthcare professionals and following information from legitimate verified sources because the human body is complex. Our anatomies and physiologies are the same, but we all have different needs based on our different structures. And so it should be based upon that. And so this is good advice, but it's for everybody, okay? I just want to preface that. It's not specifically for one group of people health programs and more um, insurance programs supported this type of work because if you move without pain, that's movement for life. I learned a lot about shoes today. I'm annoyed because, because of my special combination of needs. There were not as many wild colors, but that's okay because I'm going to get on the list for the wild colors. And then whenever they come in, I'm going to get some wild shoes. But I feel more supported and that's the thing that's more important than how cute the shoes are. Okay, so I've got all my shoes now and I definitely feel more prepared to run, to walk, and even a lift. Like I <laughs> was definitely lifting probably with the wrong shoes. Also found out the shoes I did have were just not good anymore. Um, I think if anything, this whole experience has taught me one thing. If she bought one cute pair of shoes and she's been running around or walking around, speed walking around on that one pair for a year, I can promise you they and her not to be you know, sounding harsh, but at her size, she could be putting more weight onto that cushion and therefore taking the cushioning out. And that's probably why her knees started to hurt. I just always want to stress how important the shoes are. It's not about color or cute. Nobody looking at that when you're running. I promise you, nobody is looking at that. The most anybody is going to ask you is like about the shoe. I promise you the wilder it looks sometimes, the more questions you'll have asked. I remember when everyone was running around on those Vibram things. <laughs> but I'm glad that she's fine. I mean, it just, it just, I guess I'm just like, oh, this is stuff I've known for an extended period of time. And this is why, for me, influencers are so problematic because they don't know. So she's been just showing this journey and all this motivational stuff and this, that, and the other. And this is the reason why everyone has said she didn't look like she was running correctly and she looked like she was going to actually hurt herself. And come to find out, she was, because her shoes weren't even proper. Oh, girl, come on. Gosh, <laughs> the life of an influencer. I only wish. Thing, And that one thing that I've learned is really that Doing anything hard in your life takes preparation, but it also takes people who believe in you. And so the more I go on this journey, the more I realize I'm not doing it alone. Uh, today, when I talked about wanting to run a 5K, the first thing that the team at Run Lab said was like, we're going to run it with you. And I think that's, that's how you do big things, guys. You do it with people who believe in you. And I think as a first step to making any changes of your life, that first best first step is to find people who believe in you because I think it, it does really make all the difference. All right, Anna. Well, that actually was pretty enjoyable this time. I have to say, 
I enjoyed that video far more than the last one because, oh, I mean, I enjoyed the last one too, but the one originally where you were telling everyone that you were a runner, the first one I think I ever reviewed, I, I enjoyed this one much more. That was that was pretty good. Okay, so Ava is continuing with her running journey, and I am envious because I've had to limit mine um, at this time. So anyway, I'll stop talking about that. I feel like I'm trying to dump my audience down. I'm doing a foodie over here. Anyway, if you do like this video, make sure you did hit the likes, leave a little comment. If you want to leave me a little running shoe in the comment section, just to let me know you got to the end of this video, that would be awesome. A little running shoe. Now that Anna knows to get properly kitted out on her feet. I'm glad for that. Everybody should. And I would ask you also to subscribe. So I'm going to play out my theme song. And if you hear any snoring in the background, that's my dog Junebug. And I need to go take her out for a quick walk before I get on to the rest of my activities this evening. All right, guys. Take care. Thank you all. Bye.